In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Onyx Pro 410 3D Printing Resin. This is a resin that was developed as a collaboration between Frozen and Loctite, and they sent me a bottle of this to test out and share my thoughts. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. This resin is currently available for sale, and you can find a link in the description of this video if you want to learn more. One of the key features of the Onyx Pro 410 is the ability to print parts that have a small degree of mechanical toughness to them, so they're rigid without being brittle. The first step of testing out this material is to make a resin validation print. This will let us dial in our settings so we can find a good compromise between high detail and fast printing speed. Loctite has some published parameters for using this material, but I didn't think it would be a good fit for the machine that I'm using, which is an Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Right off the bat, they use a 100 micron layer thickness and a 15 second exposure time, which is a little bit higher than I'm used to. Here are the settings that I used, which gave me really good results. You can use this as a jumping off point if you want to modify these settings to work with your particular machine. Because it's only a few layers thick, the validation print actually printed out relatively transparent, so you can pretty much see straight through it. What's really interesting is the level of detail that I got with these settings. The overall validation looked great with no real missing geometry. The detail was sharp and crisp, but this black was so deep that it was really hard to get it on camera. Using a pre-supported model from Loot Studios, I wanted to test out Loctite's claim that this material is a good fit for making 3D printed miniatures due to the increased flexibility and fine details. One of the first things I noticed about the resin is in its uncured state, it is a very, very reflective black, and it's almost impossible to get on video. You can see here, it almost just looks like a void when I'm recording. The 32mm miniature printed out great. The support was attached to the model, there wasn't any delamination, and I didn't see any warping or curling on any of the fine features. I used my Mercury Plus to give this a soak in 91% IPA, and shook it around a little bit just to get into the nooks and crannies. To remove the support, I soaked the model in warm water and let it sit for a little bit before removing it manually. Didn't really have any problems here, and once that was finished, I put it back into the Mercury Plus to run it through a cure cycle. One of the first things I noticed on the model was the level of detail was really, really sharp, and a lot of the fine features on the model were flexible, without necessarily being brittle, so it did have a pretty high degree of mechanical toughness. It's really hard to get on camera because this is a really deep black, so getting a reflection off of the model was kind of my best bet for capturing a lot of this detail. Because of that deep uniform black, any small defects or scratches on the model stuck out and immediately jump out at you when you're looking at them. So you can kind of see here when you're looking at this model, some of the areas where the support material was broken off, it left a small mark and your eye is just drawn to it like a magnet. You can see an example of that here on a larger mini. Despite this really high level of detail on the cloth and on the face of this model, some of the alcohol flash dried and your eye is drawn to it and it's really hard to overlook. I washed and cured this model with the support structure still attached so you can get a good sense of the detail without seeing any of those support removal scars. Overall, it's a really, really good looking material and it makes very highly detailed minis. If you're interested in printing small models that require some degree of mechanical toughness, so maybe a miniature that can survive being dropped, I would say this is probably a pretty good material to check out. You can find links to all the equipment I used in this video in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.